Rule number 46, if you're desperate, you're probably desperate. You need to rethink your strategy. If you're not cool, calm, and collected, you're gonna do the worst. War room, baby, yeah! It's a place for winners. Hi, and welcome to the MBA War Room. Tips and tactics to the B school of your dreams. Today we're going to be talking about why applying in the third round sucks. Sounds like an odd topic to start with for preparation for MBA, but it's gonna make sense because all the reasons point to what you really should do. Applying in the third round sucks because you're not ready. You're stressed out. You haven't prepared. You have work to do. Your tests aren't ready. You're not at your best. Would you do this for your work? Would you do this for something else that was really important? No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. How old are you? Are you 25? You're 26? You got a year. You got a two years. You got three years. Give yourself the time. Don't go running off and, and, and applying in a desperate state. You really need to think about being cool, being your best, researching and approaching this as a serious thing that you want to do, because it's going to change your life. You don't want to take it lightly. How old can I be, you say? Well, for guys, they can be anywhere between 22 and 29, maybe even a little bit older if they got a really good profile. You say, well, that's too old. Well, yeah, but if you've got a good profile, it's all right. 22, a little bit young, but you could always wait a year, get a little bit more mature, and work on it. Ladies, of course, you can be a little bit older. Schools love ladies. What's happened in the past three or four years is these schools have started taking ladies in droves, in big wads of ladies, and so now there's almost complete parity in all schools between men and women. Good news for equality, bad news for competition. That means you're competing directly against other women who are super qualified, and you're also competing against the guys. Why will you fail twice? Because you will fail in your first application because you were in a hurry. And then you say, oh, well, I'll just apply again. If I fail, I'll just do it again. But you will have to compete against your own terrible application. Now, some little elf somewhere has said that the schools don't look at the previous application. That's a lie. They're looking at you. They see you, and they see your previous application, and they say, what has changed? How is this person different? And if you only have a few months to change something, that can be really difficult. And plus, if you've used your grand idea in your first application, maybe you didn't do such a great job with your grand idea, you won't be able to use it again, because it's done. Someone says, how much time do I need to prepare for an MBA? You need a year. A year? Why do I need a whole year? Because of the triangle of hell. What is the triangle of hell? The triangle of hell starts with your job. You do a good job, right? You wanna do a good job? Of course you wanna do a good job. You work at a good company? You don't wanna let them down? That means you pay attention. That means you're doing a good job and you don't wanna slack off. So that's pressure, number one. Number two is the test. You might have to take the test a couple times. But I don't want to take the test a couple times. Well, then you take a huge risk. What if I get a score that's no good? Take the test again. How many times can you take? Well, if you get a progressively good score, if you start out with a 600, then you get a 650, then you get a 700, you might think, oh, that's too many times. I've taken the test too many times. What the schools see is they see the progress. And the third part of the triangle of hell is the application itself. You're gonna to wanna to take some time to do this and you're not gonna to wanna to have the test on your back. Oh, I didn't take the test yet. Oh, I didn't take the test yet. It's stress because you can, you can do your job and you can apply to the school, but you can't apply to the school, do your job and take the test. Something will give. In that triangle of hell, the thing that usually gives, not your job, the thing that usually gives 
is the test or the application. Either one, it's bad news for you. So don't get stuck in the Bermuda Triangle of MBA hell by trying to do work, test, and application all at the same time. Spread it out. Oh, well, I looked at the Financial Times. It was great. There was 10 schools on that list, and I chopped the list in half, and I'm going to apply it to the top five schools. That's my research. <laughs> That's not research. What you want to do is focus on the school that fits for you. If you have a year, you might be able to take a trip. Get out there. Get on campus. Talk to people. Some people say that if you take a trip to the school, you can talk to someone, make friends, and they'll be your recommender. That's kind of a dumb idea. But being on campus is a smart idea because then you can get a feel for the school, what's going on right there, and you can decide for yourself, hmm, I like this place, the weather's okay, I can handle that, this guy's a bit weird, but that teacher's great. Why not? Go, go to a class, talk to people, get an impression. So when you write your essay, you don't have to say, oh, well, I've been to your school, please let me go to your school. That's not the approach, you don't want that. What you say is, I've been to the school, it's awesome because there's this professor, there's this class, I want to go here, I want to do that, because I've been there and I know. That sounds like you know what you're talking about. Peer to peer, I know what I want, this is what I want. So you need time to do that, because you can't schedule a trip to the United States or wherever you want to go to school, to, to London or, or to Singapore, uh, just at the spur of the moment. Let me tell you, 15 years of talking here, your CV stinks. You work at a great company, it's a great brand. And then you tell everybody, I'm an analyst, I do analytical stuff, I'm an analyst. I'm an analyst, I do analytical stuff, I'm analytical. Everybody knows that. What did you do? Show me the money. That's what they wanna see. They wanna see that what you do makes a difference. How much does your employer trust you? Do they entrust you with money? So when your CV's looking good, you've got the, some experience on the campus, you've worked on your, your, your test scores are good because you've worked on your tests, you're ready. Did that take a whole year? Wow, you turn around, it took a whole year. So you're thinking right now, I'm gonna apply in the second round right now in January. It's four weeks, I'm gonna get ready and do it. No, you're not, you're gonna fail. What you're gonna do is you're gonna sign up for the GMAT. You're gonna take that GMAT and see what kind of score you got and then start planning for next year. That's what you're gonna do. I'm Thomas Holbert. Stay tuned for more tips and tactics here at the NBA War Room. Don't forget to subscribe, man. Do it.